Hey everyone, welcome to episode 36 of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can visit me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. Welcome to the podcast this week. Thanks so much for joining me again. If this is your first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. I am coming to you today from central Indiana, where it is sunny. It's really, really beautiful. It's still a little chilly, a little chilly for my taste, but that's okay. I am so, so thankful for the sunshine today, and it is the perfect podcasting weather. <laughs> So I am excited that I have the time to podcast today, and I actually had a really late podcast last week. Uh, I do try to podcast weekly, but I recorded it on Friday, I believe, and today is Wednesday. So I didn't get to work on everything I wanted to, but I do have some progress, and I can't wait to share it with you. Um, I'm drinking some tea right now. It's about mid 40s, I think, but with the sun, but definitely still cool enough for a cup of hot tea. I love this mug. This is from David's Tea. It has a lid and the strainer basket inside, so it's perfect for loose tea. And of course, it's a very generous size, so it stays warm with the lid. You have a ton of tea you can drink. <laughs> I love this. I had one of these cups and someone broke it. It was so sad. But this mug was gifted to me at Christmas time by a good friend here. And it was so sweet of her to give it to me. I, she knew that my mug had broke and bought me a new one. So um, super, it was just a really thoughtful gift. Uh, the tea I'm drinking is also from David's Tea. It's called Queen of Tarts. I believe it's a mostly hibiscus tea. It has a few other ingredients, but I can't tell you how much I love hibiscus tea. It just has a really, really great flavor. It smells delicious. It has a beautiful color and um, yeah, so this is still steeping and I cannot wait to start drinking it. It's so good. I have had quite a bit of sitting down obligations, um, waiting room time, you know, different meetings, not meetings. I don't work outside of the home, so it's not meetings like that, but just some different obligations I had to fulfill. And I remembered to bring my knitting. <laughs> so exciting. So I have been working on this sock this week and I got the first one done, except for the heel. I'm doing afterthought heels at the very end. Uh, this is from Desert Vista Dye Works in the heart-shaped anemone colorway. It's a self-striping yarn. It is a really beautiful shade, a medium neon pink, uh, maybe some lavender in there, aqua, really pretty. Um, I would call this blue maybe a cornflower blue. It's just so, so pretty all together. You just cannot beat these colors. My daughters, I know I mentioned last week on the podcast that my daughters are all crazy over these colors, but uh, the good thing is, is these are pretty small socks. These are for my five-year-old and I am going to have a ton, a ton of this yarn left because it's from a 100 gram skein. So I've already started the toes on these and I found, as you do with kids, you find little bits and bobs around the house. I found this cute little, this little seashell charm and it's, it's a charm. I think it's from one of their, you know how kids have their little jewelry kits and whatnot, bead kits. And I found one on the floor and so I picked it up and I had put it in my pocket and I forgot it was there. And so when I was at, when I was just sitting waiting, I reached into my pocket and realized I had it. So what I did with it is it's on a jump ring and I just kind of laced it onto one of the stitches so I could tell where the beginning of the row was, <laughs> but 
These are speeding along. They're just vanilla socks, toe up. I used, um, let's see, Judy's Magic cast on. Is that what it is? Yes, Judy's Magic cast on for the toe. And uh, I think about 10 stitches for the toe, 10 or 12 stitches. And then for my toe increases, I just do knit front back. I don't do make one left, make one right. I just knit front back at the beginning and end of each row, um, I guess at the beginning and end of every other row. So you have a row of increases and then a round of increases and then a round of just plain knitting. Um, so basically you're increasing four stitches every other row and until you get to your specified stitch count, which I think mine is 52 stitches. And I've already hit that. I hit that right at about the top of this blue one and then I'll, I'm on to the pink. I'm off, I'm just doing my vanilla stockinette. And um, what I did on this one, I am gonna try to make these matching. And so what I did on this one is I used I basically did like half a stripe of purple on the top and then the rest of the purple into the aqua. That is the beginning of the toe on the next sock. So it will match, it should match this perfectly. I just did a two by two rib at the top with um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off at the end. So these will be true afterthought heels. So I will cut in right where that little bulb marker is there. I will cut in right there and make a heel at the very end. And I haven't decided if I'm going to make yeah, a solid heel or if I'm just going to use the striped yarn. I haven't decided yet. So I have a little bit of time on that. I'm not really in a hurry because I don't have any more vanilla knitting patterns. I'm not doing any stockinette anymore because I've actually finished knitting my other daughter's sweater. And here it is, it's not finished, but all of the knitting is done. And I have been quite anxious to get this off the needles first because it's still cool enough to wear a sweater and it will be for a while. So I want to make sure that my daughter has enough wearing time of this this season I guess um, have really been anxious to maybe possibly don't hold me to it but <laughs> work on my Stephen West mystery knit along shawl from last year I've kind of been feeling the push for that so it's not a promise don't hold me to it but We'll see what happens. So what I did from last week is I actually finished, obviously, finished knitting both the sleeves and they are just plain stockinette and have a garter rib cuff, about four, I would say like garter bumps. They look like, I, want, I don't want to say rows, but it is kind of a row. It's like four hills, I don't know which ends up being about eight, <laughs> eight rows. Stockinette on the other. As you can see in the front here, I haven't sewn up the pockets yet, but what will happen, they, there's a garter rib on the pockets, and this is the only modification I made on the pattern, and I think I've done this every time I have knit this pattern. Oh, I should mention the pattern. <laughs> It's called Starboard by Alicia Plummer. And as you can see, when you flip up this pattern or the pocket, it has an angled top, which makes getting your hand in and out really easy and just adds a little bit of interest to the pattern. And then also there's a garter uh, rib at the bottom, I guess, or a hem maybe, a garter hem. And so by making a garter ridge here, it will mimic the hem as well. So I just need to sew that up like that. The neckline also is garter. 
And I, when I went to pick up the stitches for this neckline, I did, what am I trying to say? I didn't pick up every stitch, I guess. I skipped a few here and there because I wanted to have uh, more of a fitted neckline rather than an open wide neckline. Um, my kids wear t-shirts under their sweaters a lot or other short other shirts and I have found with a really wide neckline it just doesn't look quite right if they have a shirt on underneath so and let's be honest I hope they have a shirt on underneath because I don't want to wash sweaters all the time <laughs> so I that's the way I did this neckline I know on some of the necklines, uh, other projects I've seen, it is a little bit wider. I knit this on a size six needle, the garter rib rose, I knit on a size four, and that is, I, I guess that is a modification from the pattern as well. I believe the pattern calls for a US five and seven, and I can't remember what that is in for everywhere else. I believe a six is maybe a four millimeter. I could be making that up as well. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited that this is nearly to the end. I'm going to steam block it and then stitch up the pockets and I'm sure she will be wearing it today. <laughs> this, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, the yarn. I didn't even talk about the yarn. This is from Madeline Dosh. It's called French Toast. It is such an awesome yarn. I have really, really loved it. I'm gonna give you a close up here. I'm pretty sure it is looking washed out because it is so, so sunny here. There's so much light coming in through the windows. That's more accurate right there. It's a beautiful blend of you know, a bluey, I guess it's it's a cornflower blue, like the last sock I showed you. Cornflower blue, kind of a, a little deeper shade of a bubblegum pink. We have beautiful pops of orange, green, and some darker speckles in there. I alternated skeins every row, including for the sleeves. Um, when I caked up the yarn, there was a marked difference between colors, as is hand-dyed yarn. Um, but I think by blending the colors together, it's looked really great. And no obvious pooling, as far as I could see. So, I think right here, maybe, you can see pooling. I, this is the only part in the whole sweater on the that hem that I did not alternate and I'm fine with that I'm totally fine I don't have a huge problem with pooling anyway but um, frankly I think it kind of adds some interest and just makes a sweater or an accessory unique and um, yeah to each his own right but this was great the sweater has been awesome and I was going to mention uh, that this colorway, French Toast, has just been discontinued by Madeline Tosh. So um, I know it's sold out. I'm sure lots and lots of, of yarn shops have this colorway. But I purchased this from Jimmy Bean's Wool. I know that it is, at least in the Tosh DK base, which this is, it is sold out at Eat Sleep Knit, I'm pretty sure. And those are the two yarn stores that I shop with quite a bit online because that's just where I go. <laughs> so yeah, this has been a really great pattern. I have a ton of yarn left and I didn't bring it with me, but I am going to weigh it so I can let you know, but I, bet I could have got away with three skeins. I purchased four. I have quite a bit of yarn left. So I am interested to see how many grams are left. And 
yeah i mean the thing is i love this yarn so much and it's not a unique yarn as far as the base it's a very obviously a very versatile it's a merino wool so i will be able to make some really fun accessories with it again all of my girls are just lusting over the sweater and so one of them will get lucky and get an accessory made from this as well so this is almost finished which is great now because i've been working so much on this and just life right it's been really busy lately I have not worked on my Lune shawl at all, and it's really quite a shame because I've really loved it. But now I, I am just a monogamous knitter through and through. That's just the way it goes, and that's just the way I am. So now that the sweater is nearly finished, I will be able to really turn my attention on the shawl and uh, get that going before, maybe before I start anything else. <laughs> we'll see. But I wanted to share with you some yarn uh, that I recently purchased and that was gifted to me. Um, I really love sharing my acquisitions with you guys and I think that you like seeing it too. Um, so let me share those with you. I recently learned about some new dyers, well some new to me dyers, and their yarn was really beautiful and so I of course had to buy some. <laughs> And the first dyer that I purchased yarn from, I heard about from Natalie on the Nitty Natty podcast. And this is from Malia Made It. And I wanted to show you how cute her card is with these rainbow stitch markers. So cute, such a good idea. But this is called Rainbow Unicorn. <laughs> right up my girl's alley, I'll tell you that. And this is a beautiful, sparkle, self-striping yarn. I cannot wait to cast this on because it's really, really soft. I mean, just super incredibly soft and I don't know if you can see the sparkle in there but it's gonna be so much fun to cast on so that was a fun acquisition of course the name is everything <laughs> the second dyer that was new to me and I'm pretty sure I just I sometimes I get things mixed up but I believe uh, Kay from the Crazy Sock Lady podcast um, had this yarn on her podcast. So this is from Knitterly Things. Again, another glittery self-striping sock. And it's called Some Some Summertime. Again, it's all about the name, right? <laughs> This is such a beautiful, beautiful blend of aquas and greens and deep pinks and oranges. So this is going to be so much fun to cast on as well. And this one's called Sometime, Sometimes, yes, Sometimes in April. Very, very beautiful springy greens, oranges, light pinks again on glitter so i am so excited and i'm thinking now that i should probably cast these on for april socks yes <laughs> i need to do that but these are su super super cute so um i was excited to hear about those new dyers and or new to me dyers and get some new self-striping yarn that will be really fun and then the last uh yarn i wanted to show you was a really gift really sweet gift from my friend molly from uh, molly klein designs and sweet tea yarns and she sent me this awesome bold beautiful colorway called flower child and i think it is so pretty 
really, really gorgeous blend of colors. And I think this will also become socks. And I did purchase um, a sock pattern from Kay, Crazy Sock Lady, <laughs> her new pattern that just came out. And I need to see if this will work for that pattern. Um, it does have some kind of, I guess, patterned, it's patterned socks. So it's not just vanilla socks. And I'm not sure if this colorway will work with that, but if it does, I might use this for that. So we'll see what the future holds, but yeah, I thought that was really sweet of Molly to send this. She, um, we became friends when I moved here to Indiana and um, we don't live super close to each other, but we share a state, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> Yeah, so that was really sweet of her to send this beautiful yarn. Thanks, Molly. It was really, really sweet. So, yeah, that is what I have purchased lately and, um, and what I've been up to. So, I hope you enjoyed the podcast this week. I hope to join you again next week with some FOs. I'll show you the sweater. It'll be finished by then. Hopefully some more on my Lune shawl and who knows maybe another cast on because it seems like that's what i've been doing lately <laughs> but if you enjoy the podcast i would love if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the podcast and until next time i hope you have an awesome day bye